Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and in this video I want to talk about the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. It's a bit of a quick heads up video. I'll probably go into detail in another video. At the moment we've got quite a lot of solar activity and that means that when the sun is active it tends to throw off solar flares and we've had quite a few of those happening lately. And when one of those flares hits the Earth's magnetic field, if all things come together at the right time, we can get these amazing auroras that you normally see at higher latitudes, places like Iceland, Norway, Sweden, that sort of thing. But we can see them further south where I am. I am at 53 degrees latitude north and I managed to capture a picture of the aurora. I'm going back a couple of weeks now. I'm just putting a picture on the screen now. This is Mary's Shell on the promenade just north of Blackpool. Would you believe this? I managed to capture the aurora above this uh, artwork on the beach and just look at that amazing isn't it with the greens and the reds now after I took that picture I went on a bit of a road trip up to Scotland because I wanted to get further north and see if I could capture the aurora in Scotland I thought oh if I go to Scotland and I managed to get something like that in Scotland it'll be absolutely amazing well I went to Scotland the next day and I got to Scotland after about a four and a half hour trip and I took this photograph after it got dark and you can see we've got the aurora there in Scotland. I managed to capture the aurora. Um, I went to Scotland, but as you can see, can you see how we've got this cloud? You can certainly see the green there. This is in Glencoe. So I drove all the way to Glencoe. It was all spur of the moment thing. And I'm just gonna show you another picture. I went a bit further along and I took this picture. And as you can see, the cloud just took over. And unfortunately, um, I never got to see or photograph the Aurora again in Scotland. So that was a bit of a bust folks, but I had to do it. I had to see if I could get up there and capture that while it was really, really strong. Now the sun's activity is actually rising at the moment and that's great because it means we're more likely to get um, solar flares. The solar wind is very, we've got a constant, we're getting battered by the solar wind. The magnetic field is getting battered all the time. When it's at the top of the, uh, the activity, it tends to be a bit flat, uh, the same as when it's at the bottom, but when it's either going up or going down, that's when you're more likely to get this kind of activity from the sun. And at the moment, we're, we're on the way up, so this is great. So um, it's, it's a good chance for us to see the Aurora further south. Now in the UK, there's a good app you can use. It's called Aurora Watch UK. That's what I use. And it alerts you to when there's a possibility to see the Aurora further south. It lets you know. An orange alert, or should I say an amber alert, is probably the minimum type of alert that you would need in order to be able to photograph the aurora now i must say that when i took that picture of the shell i could not see the aurora with my eyes i tried hard but maybe it was a light pollution coming from the promenade i don't know i tried my best to see it unfortunately i couldn't see it now this happened last night now we're a few weeks on from when i took that photograph i had another alert from aurora watch uk if you're watching this in another country you might have to find another app but in this country we use aurora watch uk and it's very very handy we got an amber alert for a roar around about midnight last night so what i did was i drove along the motorway to the east of blackpool around about 15 minutes a few miles out say five miles or so out and i parked up on a dark lane with a northern horizon uh, somewhere near the town of Kirkham and I took this picture last night now it's not a world beating picture but as you can see this is what I managed to capture last night so the trick is I suppose if you do have the app and you get an alert what you need to do is to try and get to a dark place because it could be difficult to get a picture like this if you're in the town because of all the lights and everything um, but I managed to get this picture here and I'm quite pleased with it although again it was like the shell picture I couldn't see the aurora I wish I could I tried my best to see it but I think I probably just missed the best of it I think I missed the the most intense part of the display by around about half an hour and I took another picture just after this where we had some uh, a bit of cloud in the way you know a little bit of cloud there added to the picture you can see the green you can see the red a little bit of red there as well and uh, it is a good picture of the aurora and i managed to catch it for the second time this year and then before the clouds took over altogether and then the aurora died down so i think that was the end of the show last night but i just missed the, the probably the best part of it the most powerful part of it so what i want to do now is i've told you about the app aurora watch uk which you can get on your phone and it alerts you to when there's a chance of seeing it 
where we are down here at these latitudes. You can even see it down on the south coast. Can you believe it? If the if you get, say, I would say a red alert or something like that, to have a chance to see it further down south. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of cameras. So let's check these two cameras out, which you can use to photograph the aurora. Okay, now if we get a powerful display of the Aurora, it's possible to capture them on a mobile phone these days. Yes, the mobile phones are really, really good for capturing the Aurora. But traditionally we've used cameras like these. We've got DSLR camera like mine. D850 here is a full frame camera. I want to give you an idea of the settings that I used to take those pictures, the pictures of the shell and the picture that I took last night. And if you don't have a camera quite like this one, you might have like a, a smaller version, what they call an APS-C sensor version. It's got a smaller sensor and it's got an 18 to 55 lens on this one. So I'll show you how to take a picture of the Aurora on each of these cameras. So let's do that now, shall we? I'll tell you what, it's a bit breezy today. Anyway, this is my camera here and I've got a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens on there. It's a pretty good lens, you can shoot in low light with it. So, you'll see there's a window there. Now in that window is a focus window. Now fortunately, I do have a focus window on this camera. So what you can do is you can move, you can focus the lens in advance by putting it on that figure of eight there. Can you see the figure of eight? And that gets the camera pretty much focused on infinity. So that's what you can do with this lens here. You can't do it with the other camera, I'm afraid. So I'll show you the settings that I used for the picture that I took last night. So let's have a look at this now. Okay, now assuming we've got focused the lens, we want a bit the wide end as well, 24 millimeter by the way. Can you see this number here? Well, that means eight seconds. That's what I used for that picture last night. The pictures last night were eight seconds and we've got an ISO of 1600 and we're using an aperture of f2.8. Can you see there? You can put it up if you want, but you want to try and shoot with your, your widest aperture that you've got on your lens. Now this one goes down to f2.8, so that's pretty good, that's fairly fast. So that's the setting that I used to take those photographs last night. Eight seconds, ISO 1600, and the aperture was f2.8. Right, okay, so this time I've got this Canon, and it's a 1200D, and this has a smaller sensor than the, the Nikon that I was showing you before. And it's got a different type of lens as well, can you see, 18 to 55? and it's a kit lens this, so it's not quite as good as lens this one. So we want to be an 18 millimeter. Now focusing is a bit more difficult because this lens does not have a focus, um, any guide on focusing on it, but when it's closer to the body, that's when it's more in focus. But I think what I would suggest is maybe to focus on a distant light or something like that and get the focus to infinity or maybe focus on a star if you can, a bright star. So let's get this on here and then we'll have a look at the settings on this one. Right, okay, I hope you can see this. Now, Now we've got the settings on this camera here now, a little bit different. We're on manual mode, and that's the, the, the shutter speed there. We've got 10 seconds. Maybe I could bring that down to eight, like it was on the other one. Now, we've got a slight problem with the aperture here. It won't go down as low as 2.8, like it did on my other camera. That's as low as this lens will go, f3.5. So it's not as fast, this lens. So what I've done, is can you see the ISO? I put the ISO up to 3200 to compensate to get it something like an exposure, something like I did on the other camera. So if you're using a camera like this, that uh, has a smaller sensor and it also has a cheaper kit lens like I've got on this, these are the sort of settings you want to use. Eight seconds, f3.5 and ISO 3200, just to give you a rough idea of how to get a picture of the Aurora with a camera like this. Hey, I tell you what, it's turning out nice again, hasn't it, here in Blackpool? Just look at this blue sky here, isn't it amazing? Anyway, I hope I've given you some good information there on the Aurora, on how to be alerted about it, you know, using the app there, the Aurora Watch UK is very, very good. I've been using it for years. It goes right back to around about 2000, 2015, I think it was, or, or maybe earlier, when I started using that app, and it is very, very good. And I've also given you a bit of an idea on how to take pictures of it using those two cameras. And you can also get a picture of it on your phone. You might just get a snapshot on your phone. It's always better to use a camera, I think, Phones can take a great picture, you know, for social media, but you might find when you blow the picture up, it, it doesn't quite have that same quality as what it does from a camera like the ones that I was showing you there. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it's useful to you. And I will see you again on the next one. And until then, keep looking up.